Coined way back in 1871, phantom limb syndrome is a very common condition that even affects amputees today, in which they feel that a missing limb is somehow still attached to their body. So the big question is, how do these ghostly sensations even occur? First things first, we will need to know how sensation normally works. Sensitive cells embedded in our skin, called touch receptors, send information to the brain about the things we touch via the receptor's axon, which functions like a biological wire. When I touch this braille sign, the touch receptors in my hand fire a huge number of electrical pulses, giving us information about how the stimulus feels. Acting like a highway of the nervous system, the signals are rapidly transferred by the spinal cord to the brain. The brain is enveloped by an outer layer of brain cells called the cerebral cortex. This region here is called the primary somatosensory cortex. It's this part of the brain that processes and interprets all the information from the receptors to give us a conscious feeling of touch, temperature, and pain. Ah. Now, one particular theory that tries to explain phantom limbs suggested by the neuroscientist Ramachandran actually says that maybe these limbs are not caused by ghosts, but instead by a major reorganization of the connections in the somatosensory cortex after amputation. Today we visit the Queensland Brain Institute to learn more about the theory. The primary somatosensory cortex is organized like a map of the skin of the whole body. If you touch a point on the skin surface, a corresponding part of the cortex always receives and processes that information. This means that there is a specific cortical region representing each body part, a concept called somatotopy. So in our cortex, there's a face area, a leg area, an arm area, and so on. Based on what we've just learnt, the arm area sits right next to the face area in the cortex. And since the limb's been cut off, no touch information can reach the limb area of the cortex, leaving the limb cells unused. But how is this all related to phantom limb theory? Well, the last piece of our puzzle is something called brain plasticity. We know that the brain's connections, especially in the cerebral cortex, can change in response to sensory input, or in this case, a lack of inputs from the outside world. For upper limb amputees, the cells in the face area get a bit greedy and hijack the unused limb cells in the cortex. This invasion occurs by making new connections. Whenever upper limb amputees touch a part of their face, which is quite a lot during any given day, not only are the cells in the face area stimulated, but the connected limb cells of the cortex are also stimulated, therefore tricking the brain into feeling phantom sensations in the amputated limb. And that's it. Brain maps plus brain plasticity equals phantom limbs. But the theory can't explain everything. Until a better theory comes along, it might just be that ghostly limbs are haunting us after all. Mm -hmm.